So we are currently discussing a very important topic or the beginning topic of mathematical methods, dimension analysis. So in the last video, I have given you a brief idea about the dimension analysis technique, its importance, and we have also told you some principle, principle of homogeneity. According to this principle, the dimension of each term in a homogeneous dimensional equation is same. And I gave you one problem as well. Now, before uh, proceeding further into the video, let me just tell you if you are new to this channel, subscribe the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. And this problem I gave you as well. I hope you have tried. Force of viscosity F acting on a spherical body moving through a fluid depends upon its velocity, radius, and coefficient of viscosity of the fluid. Using method of dimensions, obtain an expression of so what you gonna do to solve this problem? So you are given this force. It is depending on three factors: g, r, and eta. So let's say it is depending upon e to the power a, a, r to the power b, and eta to the power c. This a, b, c are some constants. Now, if we can find out the values of A, B, and C, then we can easily establish a relationship between these different quantities and we can get the expression for F. Okay, so just write it K times V to the power A, R to the power B, eta to the power C. Now, we know the dimension of velocity, radius, and coefficient of viscosity. So, what are those dimensions. So the dimension of velocity, you know, meter per second. So L T inverse. This is the dimension of velocity. Dimension of force. The first one. It is m L T to the power minus two. We know it. Then dimension of R length. This is length, pure length. And eta. Those who do not know, the dimension of eta is m l inverse inverse so we got all the dimension of all the quantities now according to the principle of homogeneity the dimension of left hand side and the right hand side could be the same so what we're going to do we're going to equate the dimension on both sides so just equate the dimension on both sides so the left hand dimension is m l t to the power minus 2 and the right hand dimension is Oh, a k. k is a constant, so we are just ignoring it. v to the power a means l inverse to the power a, r to the power b, l to the power b, eta is m l inverse inverse to the power c. So if you uh, gather the coefficients of m, l, and t, you get m to the power c, l to the power a plus b minus c, t to the power minus a minus c. Now, if you equate the dimension on both sides, you see m to the power 1 is here, c to the m to the power c is here. c is equals to 1. Okay. And a plus b minus c is equals to l to the power 1 is there. So this is equals to 1. And c, the value of c we have got 1. So it means a plus b is equals to 1 plus c means 2. a plus b is equals to 2. And further, minus a minus c is equals to minus 2 means a plus c is equals to 2 and c is equals to 1 means a is equals to 1. If a is equals to 1, then v is equals to 2 minus a. So b is also equals to 1. So our relation becomes f is equals to a constant k v r into eta because a, b, c, all of them are 1. So we are getting this option to be correct option. Option A is the correct option for this question. Now let's move forward to another question. This question came in CSR net December 2015. In the scattering of some elementary particles, the scattering cross section sigma is found to depend on the total energy E and the fundamental constant H and the speed of light C. Using dimension analysis, the dependence of sigma on these quantities is given by. So how are we gonna do this? You are given hc by e to root and all of many other things. You have to find out sigma. 
so what is sigma sigma is basically uh, the dimension of sigma is the dimension of area now if you can calculate uh, what among these quantities gives you uh, the dimension of area that will do our work now h h has a unit joule socket okay c has the unit meter per second and energy energy has the unit joule okay so we need area means meter square if you take hc upon e let's see how what value it gives you joule second and c is meter per second and divided by e is joule 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 cut here second second cut here. so this is we are getting meter so we need meter square so if you somehow take a square of it then that should be giving you meter square which is the dimension of area hc by e whole square should be the dimension of uh, sigma in this way using dimension analysis we can easily find out uh, the dimension of uh, any quantities okay so i think you have understood the importance of this dimension analysis technique now before we end the video let me just tell you a few things that on an academy you can take csr net physical science preparation you can utilize our physics app and you will get 10 percent off these many benefits are there you can pause and read my approach i precisely give you the concept of the concept topic i discovered the mathematical formula do your analysis relevant problem based on the topic during previous year questions are discussed from more and are also given this course is currently going on detailed course on quantum mechanics this course is going to come in the month of september september 8 detailed course on classical mechanics you can get the link in the description and this kind of fee structures are available if you utilize our referral code physics have an academy will give you 10 percent off so this is all for this video thank you very much for watching this video if you are enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up and if you are new to this channel please subscribe the channel and don't forget to click the bell icon finally thanks for watching